Good morning! It's Saturday and I am just about to head out to Vegas. I finished packing, uh, you know, disassembled her crate, put it in the car, I got my luggage in the car, and just now I finished packing her food. I bought the Yeti last month because I wanted to use it for Montana, right? And I'm actually realizing, well, specifically the way that I packed it today, I have my glass container in there and I have three pounds of our food. So I think the glass container itself takes up a lot of space. So I have the ice pack on the very bottom. Here, I'll show you guys. The handle thing is a little annoying. Yeah, maybe I can't show the bottom, but you see the red right down there? That's my um, glass container. It's sitting on top of an ice pack. And this is just something I got from Freshly, another ice pack, but now I realize that it froze in a way that's not really ideal for my case, so it can't sit down flat, it's kind of angled. So I just brought some kombucha, and <laughs> that's about it. Now we close it, and put this in the car. I finally got everything into the car, I tossed my trash, and I replaced the pee pad for the cats. At first I was feeling really lazy, but I was like, oh, fuck it, I don't want to come back to it possibly leaking. So I changed it. I'm a little lazy to open the trunk to show the back, so here's what it looks like. This time I was smart and I decided to layer the crates over each other so they're not um, getting in the way, especially the cover. It's still a very large piece. And then over there, I just have my Yeti fitting nice and comfortably compared to my other one, which was huge. I'm glad I sold that one off. And then here, that's just my shampoo conditioner. I got my tripod. I brought my enzyme cleaner just in case. I feel like you have to if you have puppers. Got my backpack and then got my luggage. And honestly, I need a bigger luggage. This luggage doesn't fit enough. Ideally, I want to not have to bring a backpack. Like I don't want to have all this shit just like sitting around when I travel. I want it to all fit into one case thing. So in the future, that's something I'm gonna have to consider so it's not so much of a hassle carrying things around. So right now we just got gas and I took a piss. I drank half my kombucha, so definitely really needed to go. And I think this will probably be our last stop, obviously. Um, our first stop and our last because we've driven about two and a half hours, I'd say. And I also think that it will probably be too hot to stop again the next time. It's probably gonna be close to 100 degrees by the time I get closer. So I wanted to give her some time. Although she did piss and she drank her water, as you can see down there. <laughs> Riley, good, hi, hi. Always turning your back on me. All right, let's get you in the car. Okay, so far the drive has been fine. There was just one slowdown that I passed by just earlier for about six to eight minutes. And I actually do think there was another one right when I continue for a little bit. And then after that, it seems like it's generally smooth sailing. And actually that slowdown seems to have disappeared. So it says I have three hours and 20 minutes before I get there. But honestly, I've been trying to take my time because my estimated arrival is 2.30 and it's not available until 3 o'clock so I should be fine though 30 minutes beforehand I think we'll be just fine getting there and everything yeah I'm pretty excited I'm super well rested which I love I was in bed before 12 o'clock and I woke up at 8 and everything really just has been very smooth so far so I'm in a great mood and I am really looking forward to seeing my parents when I get there I haven't even heard from them yet today. They haven't texted me or anything, so they probably expect me to reach out to them, but it's like, damn, they're so quiet. All right, I am going to resume driving and I will see you guys when I get there. Hi, so I've made it to my Airbnb, but the shitty thing is I am 30 minutes early and I can't check in yet. And honestly, I'm not really pleased with the communication with this guy. I feel like he takes a while to respond. So right now, I don't have check-in instructions like at all. And normally they either give you like some lock code or something because they're not usually there to let you in. It's always like self check-in generally. I'm not sure about this one. Maybe he will be here to let me in. Hopefully not because I just don't care for stuff like that. So. He told me that it's not available until 3 o'clock, it's 
Um, I let Riley out to pee and she pooped, which is great, but unfortunately it's just pretty hot outside. I felt like the ground was pretty hot because I was going to change her collar side and when I put my knee on the ground I was like, oh shit, this is pretty hot. It must be pretty hot for your paws. So I brought her back into the car and I think I'm going to try to find somewhere to eat in the meantime and luckily there's... There's actually a Buffalo Wild Wings really close by, but I want to eat something healthy. Let me see if they have an acai bowl nearby. So there's a bowlology nearby. All right, yeah, I guess I will go there. Never can get enough of these acai bowls. It's just two minutes down the street. This is great. But the sucky thing is I don't have anywhere I can go to eat so I feel like I'm gonna come back to my car and eat it or something and it's so close that it's not gonna be three o'clock by the time I'm ready so this fucking guy once it's ready once three o'clock hits I would like to know if I can check in on my own or if I have to freaking wait for him so anyways I'm gonna go get a bowlology alrighty I picked up my pitaya bowl so I <laughs> Too bad they don't put any um, granola on the very bottom, but I think it looks pretty good. Obviously it sucks compared to my usual one because I don't know if there's options to add more fruit onto the top, but I'm sure if there was, they would probably charge you extra. So for now I stuck with strawberries, blueberries, and banana, and then the usual granola. And we have puppers hiding. Riley, good, hi baby. Good. 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 <laughs> so cute. All right, I'm gonna go get some gas really quick. Uh, it's 2:50, so he says he's actually gonna be meeting with me. So hopefully it doesn't take too long, and hopefully I can park under some shade. That way, she'll be in the car while he shows me everything and. Yeah, I don't want to take her out of the car while he's there. I just feel like it would just be her getting in the way a little bit. Um, less convenient, so I do think I saw some shaded areas over there. But I'll probably ask him about parking because it's like a gated condo area, so I always get a little nervous about that. Do I need a parking pass or something? I don't want to be towed. That would be stupid, but yes, need to get some gas. Just met up with a guy. It seems like he lives there right now, or at least he maybe schedules it so he lives there when nobody's there and then he leaves otherwise because he says he has a few things to pack up. He also has two Yorkshire Terriers and they're on the patio right now and apparently he didn't... I guess I made the mistake of not specifying I was bringing Riley. I really thought I did but this is a pet friendly listing so I think it's okay. He said he was just worried about marking wars which I really don't think that's an issue because she does not pee inside she's not allowed to pee inside I don't care if it's for instinct or nature or marking and whatever the fuck territorial stuff so I mean she's gonna be created regardless uh, I did forget or kind of didn't realize until I got here that it's going to be annoying bringing my stuff in because the entrance is over there I guess I could try to park a little closer I don't think there's a spot though yeah, actually, I'll just try to park a little closer. I just parked mainly over here because of the shade since I needed to go in and meet him. But yeah, he says he's gonna finish packing a few things, so he needs about five minutes. And my freaking bowl is melting a bit, which I think is fine because usually it starts off really icy and I like it to be softer, so that should be okay. But I'd say I mainly have like three heavy things to bring in my luggage, which still manages to be heavy when it's small. Her crate which is very annoying to carry. And then I have to open the freaking door, open two doors, and then uh, bring it inside. That is the cost of Riley. And then my freaking cooler, which is fairly heavy in itself. So I'm gonna just move closer and start carrying stuff towards the door, I suppose. Oh, I can finally sit and eat and check in. So honestly, this place is annoying. That was very annoying. A freaking acai bowl by now, it's probably all melted. Well, actually, the consistency on it isn't bad. This place's pitaya tastes a lot more yogurty 
then my other place my other place i think just blends it straight up and there's like it's kind of icy so first off i said that i was arriving here at 2 30 right and i know the listing says not until three o'clock but i asked him just in case if it could be available earlier and he said it wasn't so i got here at 2 30 and it's decided to get my pitaya bowl i got gas and then i went down to the pet store to get a leash because i realized that i forgot mine and i don't really know if i see myself walking her around here because the street right outside is pretty busy but just in case i decided to get one so i don't have to worry about it later <clears throat> and just in case residents here might be annoyed at seeing her off leash around the property i have no idea finally around like 305 he says to come here and when i come i realize that he actually seems to live here when he's not using it so i'm not a big fan of that because first off all my previous airbnb experiences were self-check-in and i will admit that i did not look for that when i was making a listing partially because booking a listing here in vegas was actually a huge pain in the ass i really hated it everything was very expensive for shitty things like this is a condo it's not even a house and normally i would not do condos but i decided you know what i don't want to pay up the ass for some fucking house so i'm gonna get a condo just for two nights so <clears throat> first off i come here and it's hot as fuck outside right it's like 85 degrees out maybe close to 90 so i did not want like i mentioned earlier did not want to bring riley in while he was still here so i put her in the car i parked in the shade and i also left my air conditioning on which is a little bit complicated for the prius because um I, you know how these newer cars kind of have these weird mechanism when it comes to your key being in proximity of the car so for me, I'm not allowed to lock my car with my key on the outside if my car is running. So in order to lock my car while leaving it running for the AC on for her, I have to use my manual key, like slip it out, put it in, and then lock my car from the outside. So I had to do that while he was here showing me around. So he gave me the key and at first he was like, oh, let me show you the common room. And I was like, I'm not going to be using that. Don't bother. Then he tried to show me the TV and I'm like, what the fuck? You know what? I need to bring my stuff in. My dog is waiting in the car. It's fuck fucking hot as shit outside. So please, you know, get the fuck out. Finally, after he left, I was, you know, standing on the sidewalk for about five minutes, waiting for him to pack his shit up and get out. And then finally, now I am here. But I will say that if I knew that he was living here, I would not book this place because I just never want contact with a host. The whole point of traveling and staying somewhere is not to interact with the host, in my opinion. I don't want any interaction about any of that stuff. I don't need your recommendations for local things and I just want everything to myself. So the fact that my arrival, it's 3.53 right now. It took almost an hour and a half for me to get in and get settled. So I'm kind of annoyed about that. Um, but the good thing is that this condo is right by the entrance so what is normally annoying as fuck to bring your stuff into a condo was slightly better because of that I haven't brought in her crate yet because that one is also kind of heavy it's still in my car I just wanted to bring in everything else first so I brought in my Yeti cooler I put my stuff in the freezer and of course the fridge has food and shit in there because he lives here my dad called earlier and he pretty much wants to meet up at around five o'clock which is a little bit late that's like an hour later and i'm honestly not even sure i feel like going out and doing something right now for an hour because it's so hot out what am i gonna do i would love to do something with her but it's too hot out for her so she's gonna have to chill here and i'll just chill here with her i guess actually i should give her some water that way by the time i leave she'll have to pee because i'm sure she's thirsty <clears throat> man i have so much phlegm in my throat lately all right i'm gonna eat and hang out for a little bit and i'll show you guys around in a little bit hello there welcome to my airbnb so earlier i was not lazy and i decided to finally retrieve this from my car man sometimes i really wish that there was a way for crates to be less annoying to carry because they're not necessarily super heavy they're just very bulky so anyways, it's basically a studio. So kitchen, counter, I pulled out this chair so I could charge my phone on it. 
um, typical kitchen and stuff and uh, living room TV the patio is just passed over there and earlier I was starting to watch Rudy it's a movie with Sean Astin it's in the 90s I think or 80s he was quite young in that movie and then bed my shit we got a robe I will probably not be using that although now that I think about it I was expecting there to be a towels here so I might actually have to use that shit because they didn't bring any and uh, hi there my dad called me earlier and reminded me that the <laughs> my dad called me earlier and reminded me that the agent was having a party at her house and that uh, asked me if I wanted to go. I said, sure, I'll go there for a little bit. You guys know me. Normally, I'm not a fan of these types of gatherings, but what I'm thinking that would be fine is if I get to control when I leave, right? In the past, I think a lot of times whenever I associated parties with my parents, I didn't like it because we would go there as a family and I couldn't leave unless they wanted to leave and I always wanted to leave pretty early so for today I just told them yeah I can go and check it out for a little bit but I probably won't stay very long because I'm just not into that shit um, I don't know this woman at all I want to see the house and I'm wondering if I can bring Riley there um, I don't know if that's possible I don't know if it's technically ours yet if I can bring a pet over I think I should be able to but I also need to ask my parents if they're okay with me recording the inside because if they're not, then I won't show you guys. My dad said the party is 5.30 to 6 and he's gonna text me the address. So I guess that's where I'm going shortly. I probably won't have time to finish the movie, which is fine, I'll watch it and finish it later. But what I was thinking, Oh, she's tired, rightfully so. I hope you sleep well while I'm at the party. But I was thinking that where the fuck am I gonna exercise, right? I guess I might actually just exercise right here, but that's hardly any space. See, in my home, I would not have a coffee table because I really feel like it just takes up so much space. And I like to not decorate my house with the thought of other people needing shit like that so I was watching my movie and yeah this is basically it nothing special I'm sure Montana will be much more exciting but yeah now I have a three-day weekend and I guess just so I don't have to deal with stuff later I might have to put her crate together I just have to put the nails in and screw them on something on your eye. Nice and cool in here. Turn on the AC again. Just for you. Right. Good girl. Okay, it's pretty much time to head out. It is 5.35 right now. And I already let her out to piss. I offered her a poop, she didn't need to go. I kind of don't think she really needs to anymore, but I want to be safe and make sure I offer it to her because it would feel awful if 
I didn't and she needed to, you know, that's just not cool, especially because this is not my place. So if she had an accident, it would be very, very, very hard to deal with. So I am going to head out. I'm going to bring a little sweatshirt just in case because this is an indoor party and we all know I get cold very easily. So I think I have everything. I'm probably not going to bring my backpack. I don't think I have a reason to, so I'm going to bring my keys. Oh, and my wallet is in my car, so I should be good. Okay, right now I'm waiting outside the community. My dad's calling. My mom. Hello? Yeah, I'm here. Oh. Wait, you can get through? Oh. Wow, interesting. She's not sniffing me as much as I thought she would. There's a dog there. A little Yorkshire Terrier that was humping the fuck out of my leg. Well, more like jumping on me constantly. Okay, I'm gonna change my shoes so I can get some sneakers on. I'm gonna take her to the park. I wanted to leave the little gathering. Wait, was that always there? Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, I wanted to leave the gathering because I wanted to take her to the park since, you know, during the day it's too hot to. And it was just... Chinese people there, <laughs> which is fine, but they were speaking Mandarin the whole time, so couldn't really keep up. I mean, I think I can reasonably, but still, you know, it's not my crowd. Older people let them have their conversation. Doesn't really make sense for me to stay and hover around, so I ate, stayed for an hour, and I now wanted to come back and spend time with my puppers, right? Riley? Good. I need to put on the collar and I'm gonna be too lazy to bring the crate to the car, so she's gonna go crateless for now. I am finally back to the condo for good this evening. <sighs> we didn't get to play fetch, unfortunately. Right when I got to the park, it was like a party there. There was like a full team playing baseball, people playing tennis, people playing basketball. Everywhere people were walking dogs, everywhere people were strolling their kids. <laughs> so. I decided to just walk her around the immediate neighborhood, which was nice actually, because there was basically nobody walking around there and it was really peaceful, very quiet, and I got to see the types of views those houses have. And it reminds me of Utah a little bit, although I think the view is not as nice. The rocks don't look as nice. <laughs> okay, time to do my workout. Okay, so before I get started, let's look through the bag and see what I brought. So first up, I have ankle weights. I believe these are each 2.5 pounds. I really wish they would write it somewhere. Yeah, I'm pretty sure these are 2.5 pounds each. Next, I have light resistance bands. I've been using these a lot. I ordered these from Pevolve directly. Maybe I should have checked Amazon first to see if they sold cheaper ones because obviously Pevolve inflates their prices. Like for example, their two pound weight, they were selling for 30 fucking dollars. And I bought it off Amazon, two of them for like 10 bucks. So I really, really like using these though. Next I have heavy resistance bands. And then the last one I have my two pound weight. Oh wait, I have one more. I have another resistance band. This one I tend to use for my thigh area, but yeah. That's about it, and it's time to get to work. I wanted to quickly take the time to comment on something that uh, I guess I'm not used to, but I think it's pretty dumb. So, the shower only has half a door. So the water does not actually come out, which is good, but you're cold as fuck for half of your body while you're taking a shower. I feel like that's pretty bad. Also, I know this is a studio, but still, that's like no privacy 
I'm pretty sure people live more than one person in a studio like space and what a terrible design. But yeah, I woke up early today. I set an alarm for eight because my parents wanted to meet at the house at 10 and I wanted to walk where I lie before it got hot, but it still got hot pretty quickly. I mean, when I first walked out, it was nice and warm and I actually brought my sweatshirt just in case, but by the time we were coming back, it was pretty hot for her and she was pretty tired. She gets tired pretty quickly from the heat. Makes sense, I guess, because she's wearing like a sweater. Um, I don't know exactly what I'm gonna do in the afternoon. So anyways, I'm going to blow dry my hair. So it's about 9.30 and I wanted to pick up some breakfast before I went over to my parents' house. So I am here getting an acai bowl. There was another bowl that other people got yesterday that looked pretty good. So I think I want to try out another flavor. Interestingly enough, I feel like when I take trips or maybe this one's different because I feel like I'm spending more time with parents and I'm doing more city related stuff than just my hikes. So I can feel like some mornings I'm like, I want to look nicer today. And I didn't actually bring that much for that because yeah, I want to dress for comfort. For example, yesterday when I was wearing my jean shorts, the jean shorts are pretty uncomfortable around the crotch area, especially if you're sitting down for a while. So I was thinking, man, maybe I can't wear jean shorts to the O presentation tonight. For some reason, I'm thinking, oh, if it's in the casino, if it's in the hotel or whatever, maybe I can't dress super casual. But yeah, I'm gonna go in and pick up my bowl and then head over to the house. Just earlier when I was walking out and leaving Riley, I think for a new place like this, especially because it's a condo where her noise can bother other people, I am extra nervous about her howling. But <clears throat> I don't think that should be an issue because I think that when I put her in the bathroom, just the complete darkness just helps her a lot. So earlier when I walked out, I waited for maybe like a minute standing outside and listening and it was quiet so I left, but I still feel a little poorly about leaving her in that sort of environment. I don't know, I, I need to book houses. I really need to book houses. This time I got a bowl called Ocean and I got it with pitaya. It has some mango, apple juice blended in and some other stuff in the mix. And then at the top I have strawberries, kiwi, watermelon and granola. I actually do like the presentation of this place. I just wished, I wonder if I can ask them actually to add extra granola on the bottom. I really like that because like you mix it at the top and then you eat all the granola, but then once you get to the bottom, I feel like if you have some more granola at the bottom, it ends up tasting really good. Granola is actually one of my favorite parts about these. So maybe next time I come, I will uh, ask for this. And actually maybe, I wonder if this type of thing would interest my mom. She doesn't really like cold food, similar to me but I'm sure she would appreciate the fruit and healthy aspect of it. So now I'm going to head over to see my parents. So one quick thing I wanted to say though, I feel like it's common for Asian families to grow up not uh, showing a lot of affection, but I admittedly feel like I was thinking about what it would be like to see them again for a few days leading up to it. And I was thinking like, oh, I'm gonna give them like a big hug and everything and I'm gonna squeeze them and whatever. But then yesterday, what ended up happening was like, I met up with them. There was a gated entrance, so they had to like help me get in. And then after we parked, we just started talking and there was no moment for a hug. <laughs> but my parents are not really hugging people. It's very forced in our family. We've never kissed each other on the cheek really unless we were kids and we just never hugged so I was kind of hoping for more than just oh hi it's you again kind of feeling since it's been over a year but maybe when I see them now I'll give them a big hug <laughs> sometimes yeah my interactions with my parents can feel a little bit wooden because we're not really warm in terms of physical contact we really we really hardly touch each other so I feel like the few times when we do it's like oh oh it's a surprise <laughs> <laughs> Riley, you <laughs> wait, wait. Who? My hand is blocking her face, though. 
Ooh. He's smiling. I am back with my puppers. So I went to meet up with my parents and I did ask them if I could record the inside and as expected, they didn't want me to. I didn't really take pictures because it's just an empty house. Um, they got four bedrooms and it was, it was pretty cool. Um, it was nice to see them again as usual. And unfortunately, I didn't bring Riley because when I asked my dad yesterday, he said, best to not bring her but his reasoning was because of my flea situation and I don't think he really understands how they work so he was just concerned that she was like a carrier or some shit and would bring it to their new house and if he had an issue with that I could have just left her outside but anyways yeah I just thought that would have been a nice opportunity to bring her with instead of having her stay here we were only there for about an hour and a half I'd say it was pretty nice to see it. Um, unfortunately, they will decide to rent it out, which I feel a little poorly about because, you know, it's a new house. They're gonna move in next year sometime after they sell their New Jersey house. And I feel like it would be really nice for them to not have it be in a used state already when they move in because it's a new house. So I really hope they manage to find a really great tenant that's not gonna destroy it in any way because I will admit, just similar to me renting at my house right now, I feel like it's so easy to just be like, this is not my house. So you're not gonna be careful with stuff that you normally will be like, maybe you'll slam a door or you'll like slam a cabinet shut or you just like pull out a drawer really rough, stuff like that. You don't really think about it as much because it's not your house, there's no consequences or you have no attachment to it. So I feel like people can behave in that way with their new home, even if they're a good tenant, like I consider myself a good tenant, but I will still do those things once in a while. Afterwards, they went to their lunch with the Chinese people from yesterday and I decided not to go because even if I ate the food, which was delicious, I still feel like it's not really enjoyable for me to go. So after I went to get some ramen for lunch, not sure what we're doing in the afternoon just yet. My parents are gonna come here after their lunch, they're gonna meet me here. I kind of wanted to give them an opportunity to see Riley because I haven't spoken about it too much, but I kind of had some issues with them not listening to what I asked them to when it comes to her. That first year when I had Riley in New Jersey at the condo, I was still um, kind of lost when it comes to training. So like the first six months, I was like that typical dog owner. I would use treats and I would use only positive reinforcement for the most part. I would just be the typical, oh, my dog, go meet everyone, go see everyone, bring her everywhere, show her to everyone. And after like six to eight month mark, when I started to e-collar train her, I started to be more rigid, right? And I started to teach her the place command. And my parents don't understand the place command. So they would come over and I would say, you know, if she's on place, leave her alone. Don't really look at her, stop making noises at her, don't touch her, don't do anything. And they would not listen to me. So they would go and interact with her. They would distract her and stuff. And I guess if you don't watch my dog videos or like Riley's um, Siberian Husky structure video, maybe you don't know what the purpose of place is, but place is like meditation for them kind of. Basically, I'm asking her to stay on the cot and be in a calm state of mind and just relax and lie there and sleep. That's basically the purpose of it. Well, outside of that though, it teaches her to not be reactive to things. So if things are happening, if noises are going on around the house or outside, or if my cats are running around, I don't need her to pay attention to that. And honestly, the place command teaching her place has taught me place where if there's noise going around me that has nothing to do with me, I will not react to it either. If there's like a conversation happening, I don't need to look. I don't even want to look. I feel like I really like that I've incorporated that aspect of dog training into my life because I think it's very true. You don't have to look at everything when a noise is happening. You don't have to turn around and look. Some of it doesn't even have to do with you. If it's a fucking disaster and there's an explosion, yeah, look and run. But aside from that, I just don't think that some of it's necessary. So I'm basically teaching her to not be reactive, which is a very, very important thing for dogs because dogs are very reactive if you allow them to. And for example, when I went to that person's house yesterday for dinner, she had a dog and 
her dog was barking. The doorbell rings, bark, 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 run towards the door. Guests come in, jump all over your guests. I really didn't like that. I don't like it when dogs jump on you, but it's a small dog. People tend to think that when a dog is smaller, it's okay for them to jump, but it's really not because it's still uncomfortable. I don't think guests like that. I mean, people who like dogs think it's cute, but I don't like it. And I get the feeling that maybe because I had dog smell on me, that dog was like jumping on me a little bit more. So I'd be like walking and it would be like jumping and following me, basically kind of like humping my leg in a way. But eventually he left me alone. Backstory is um, I would be trying to train Riley and tell them to ignore her, leave her alone, and they would not do it. They also on a few occasions fed her human food when I said, I'm not going to be feeding her human food. Don't feed her human food. And I think the fact that they disrespected my request like that really, really, really pissed me off because that's basically doing the opposite of what you're asking. And I think that's a huge, a huge insult at times, I would say. So after that whole fiasco and after I moved out to San Diego, when they were going to come by again in February, I was a little bit anxious about that whole thing because I was really unhappy with them not listening to me. So when they did come that February, I did not really let them interact with her much because I think I still had that lingering anger from the way they were ignoring me previously. So I think maybe nowadays, they might be better with her. I think I can still tell that they don't really fully understand what I'm trying to teach her or what makes her so well behaved. Like they will compliment me on her behavior, but then they question me on everything else. So I don't even think I take that compliment seriously. Right now I am driving and following my parents. We are going to eat dinner, super early dinner because I just told them that I want to kind of be early for all of this stuff. So my show starts at seven o'clock and I want to make sure that I'm in the area pretty early. Like I want it to be um, very casual and relaxed in terms of traveling from destination and not rushed because my parents, especially my mom, isn't usually punctual for things and I 100% want to be in my seat like 15 minutes beforehand so I uh, don't want um, I don't want to feel rushed while eating to head over so I figured might as well do it now but we were just hanging out at the condo for a bit my parents saw Riley and I honestly just think they're not very good with dogs because they seem obsessed with needing to touch her and I didn't tell them they couldn't, but I feel like their gestures are just awkward, especially for a dog to receive it, like feeling like they need to touch her head or like kind of suddenly trying to touch her and then she'd be like, oh, what's this? And then she would kind of be skittish and move away from them. She's kind of just that type of behavior. And honestly, she behaves this way specifically with them. I don't see her behaving that way around like Shane or something and I really think it's because of the energy they tend to give off they just really don't have experience around dogs so I mean at least they got to see her whenever I'm with them I feel like I need to be cherishing our moments together and trying to focus on them and provide them you know my undivided attention and I think that's fine but the thing is, my parents are kind of hard to be that way around because I've noticed the past few times that my mom tends to just pull out her phone and start reading her Chinese stories that she enjoys. So she started doing that. And then my dad, my dad is always just really awkward where he doesn't sit down and get comfortable. So he's always standing. Like anytime he ever came over, he just stands. and. It makes it kind of hard to feel like he's comfortable to have a conversation with or that he's interested. Like I feel like he comes off very disinterested or not really, I don't know how to explain it. 
but it just doesn't motivate you to want to interact with them or to try to force it to keep the conversation going. So the whole time they were there, it felt like a lot of silence. We were just sitting there and we didn't really know what to do, especially because it's hot out right now. There's nowhere to particularly go. So we did know we were gonna go do dinner and then I was gonna go to my show and whatever they're gonna do, they're gonna do. <laughs> we're actually not eating authentic Chinese. We're eating this place called Mr. Chopsticks that they ate already. So maybe it will be okay. I was kind of hoping to eat authentic Chinese with them because that's just something I like to do when I have experienced Mandarin speakers with me. But fortunately, this is not the case. So we have arrived and I'll see you guys later. So we finished eating. Um, the food was all right. It wasn't disgusting, but my mom wasn't necessarily happy about the fact that there was a lot of oil. She felt like they used too much soy sauce. So um, not authentic Chinese, so that did suck. But whatever, food was pretty decent. And I am now here at their hotel parking lot because we decided that I would park my car here and then my dad would drop me off at Bellagio or like near that area so I can attend my show and then he would pick me up because parking there is going to be a nightmare, right? I feel like since it's different circumstances for me coming here, it definitely gets in the way of me enjoying it fully. So even though I'm not at home, I'm in a different place and no normally that sounds very exciting, I do think it's not really that great. Partially because Airbnb sucks and tomorrow when I have to sign my documents, I'm a little bit concerned about what I'm going to do with Riley. But if we manage to sign it and I get back before checkout, that would be great. But I just worry that it's not going to be that straightforward. So that is a little problematic. But I was also thinking that since I'm probably hanging around Vegas tomorrow for the day, if we're signing and closing on the house tomorrow, can't we go to our house and can't I put Riley there if we ever need to? I am finally making my way to the theater amongst all this madness happening across this random sculpture. And then here's one as well. Looks pretty elegant. I cannot believe I'm back. remember being able to buy concessions for this show. Can you imagine eating popcorn for this? Okay, let's take a look at what they're charging. $8 popcorn, nice. This seat is actually incredible. Monday and I am right outside the title company um, to do my signing for today in regards to our house. I have me an acai bowl as usual, kind of like my breakfast. <laughs> um, I saw O last night and I kind of want to go into it deeper maybe later when I have more time. It's about 10 minutes to 10 o'clock. 
so we're gonna go in soon and I don't want to go to in detail and then get cut off so I did want to talk about it yesterday after the show but I was a little upset about something in regards to my parents it made me pretty upset at the moment because it's like pent-up energy over um, multiple instances of something and it was really bothering me so I was in a bad mood and wasn't in the mood to talk so I decided to put on Far From The Madding Crowd, watch that and then went to sleep. So today, actually after signing, I was hoping to talk to my parents because I want to tell them about what is bothering me and ask them to sort of change their conversations with me, if that makes any sense. They just tend to bring up certain topics with me a lot, and it's the same topics, and I feel like they just ignore what I say, they don't listen to me, they don't really care about what I feel, I believe, because I tell them the same stuff all the time, and they keep bringing up the same topics with me, and it's starting to really piss me off. I'm going to tell them about it, and if they don't really listen, or if, if they keep behaving the same way, then I'm probably going to reduce um, my interaction with them, probably communicate with them less, and just... I I don't want to deal with that crap anymore. Hi. So, right now, I am on my way to a hike. In Vegas today, it's probably like mid 90s. So, I was not planning on doing a hike, honestly, but when I was at the title company to sign for the house, the agent there that my parents worked with. She was telling me about this place, Mount Charleston, and said that it should be cool enough to hike. So since she told me about that idea, I figured that I would rather hike than drive back and most likely experience a lot of traffic. So the good thing is that on my drive over here, it's been 90 and up, but ever since I've been driving south down into the mountain area, it's been going down. So right now my car says 84 outside, which is fantastic because I was thinking low 80s would be very acceptable for me, but right now Mount Charleston actually still has some snow on it, so that looks great. I'm also hoping that since it's a Monday afternoon that there won't really be anybody here hiking. So in the meantime, the signing went fine, just a lot of documents to sign, and afterwards I went back and packed up my stuff, and I left. So this Airbnb guy honestly is ridiculous, probably the worst that I've come across so far, but he had zero checkout instructions, and also he never responded to me because I messaged him asking what I should do, and he didn't respond, so I just left the door unlocked, I put the keys on the inside, and that's that, because I don't really know what else I can possibly do for something like that. I decided to meet my parents at a restaurant called The Lazy Dog. They have one in San Diego as well, so that's why I know about them, but I needed to find a restaurant where I could have Riley out on their patio because I no longer had somewhere air conditioned for her to be once I checked out so lunch was okay I'd say that leading up to it I was really nervous because ever since last night I kept thinking about confronting my parents about what I felt and I did manage to tell them but I don't really feel that great about it because I don't think they fully, fully, fully understand why what they're doing bothers me. So when I told them, I could kind of tell that my mom was dismissive, just in her facial expressions. I could just tell she didn't accept what I was saying. 
and she didn't really comment much on it. My dad was the one that was more engaged and more receptive, which is good, but I wish they understood more why it bothered me. And I do have to admit, it was kind of hard to tell them because I feel like when there's pent up energy in regards to something and then I tell someone, the proper person about it, I start getting emotional and my voice starts to break down a little bit and that makes it hard to convey the message you're trying to get across in a calm manner. So I tried my best and I think they understand and I think they will honor my wishes, which is good at least, but I think overall I still wish that they really understood what I was trying to say. That way they can understand why I'm asking what I'm asking. Mainly it's all about acceptance. You cannot believe there is snow here and it's so cool up here, it's amazing. What the hell? This area is pretty interesting. We still have snow right there. It's so close. And we got a nice running river. Hi, pups. <laughs> okay, so this hike is really weird, honestly. Um, I have passed by two groups of lumberjack looking people like they're dressed like firefighters and they're carrying rakes and I don't know what they're doing up here but it's the first time I've ever seen workers like that on a trail but I am in a mountain area so I guess that's something I'm not used to aside from that the hike is pretty muddy and there's a lot of water so it's making it kind of Slippery, Raleigh has gotten so dirty. Go, go, go! Just ignoring the snow. <laughs> nope. Nope, we can't. Freaking so dirty. Her entire bottom half. Okay, we're gonna keep going. This. I like completely got me so dirty. It's all over me. My shoes are freaking filthy too now. This sucks. These shoes were so clean. They were basically brand new. Uh, pups, have more water. Good job. Now I need to wipe her because look at that. Look at all that. Filthy pups. <laughs> Alright, I tried my best to clean her up. I think it's a huge improvement though. Took so many wet wipes. Finally back to my car. It took a while to wipe her down. But uh, I have to admit, sometimes when I do these motherly things for her, like wipe her down, it actually feels kind of fun or it's like heartwarming being that type of figure for someone even if it's an animal. So right now it is 3.30. I actually don't remember what time I arrived here so I don't know how long I've been here but I'm definitely ready to go back. I want to pick up some bubble tea. I haven't had some in a few days and I actually feel like during this hike my mood was kind of dampened. Um, aside from the trail conditions being kind of meh and there being a lot of people and a lot of dogs, I've had two encounters with dogs that were kind of annoying. Um, earlier on the trail there was this woman with a service vest on her dog. She was letting it lead her like several feet and I pulled Riley to the side. 
this is something that bothers me. I always pull her to the side and I still have these fucking encounters. So anyways, the dog got close. So I actually used my fucking leg to like nudge the dog because it was getting close to us. And I did that once and then the woman got startled and was like, oh shit, I didn't see you. And it's like, what the hell? Like the, the awareness of these people is crazy terrible because I know for me, whenever I'm hiking, I'm very, very alert. I hear everything. So if I see someone coming, I saw her coming like super far in advance and I'm so surprised she didn't see me. It's not like it was a curve or anything. It was straight. So I had that. And then earlier at the restaurant, um, I had her down in an area that was basically against the wall. So there was two chairs, chair, wall. Riley was basically right here next to the wall. And then there was another chair. So nobody can really get to her unless they purposefully went into my aisle to touch her. So whenever dogs were passing, I would be aware of the owner and the leash length and seeing what the dog was behaving like. So one woman passed by and she had two dogs and I noticed that one of her dogs was pulling. I saw her dog go into the aisle to try to make contact with Riley. And I grabbed the woman's leash and pretty much was like, hello, like watch your fucking dog. And she ended up probably being surprised at that and then kept walking. I don't remember if she apologized or not, but I was really, really happy for the first time in one of these dog encounters that I did that because it felt really good to be prepared and ready to do something like that and to, at the same time, advocate for Riley. So that was the other encounter I had earlier. I just feel kind of down about my parents. It's kind of a bittersweet feeling where I, f I recognize that we aren't super compatible people. Um, it seems pretty obvious sometimes that when we're together, we're only together because of family, but otherwise we don't really make super good conversation. Um, we don't connect well to have good conversations in the sense that we have diverse conversations because we really do just always talk about the same stuff. and. Sometimes I feel like I really would like for a deeper connection with my parents, especially because I don't see them very often. But when we have these gatherings and when I realize this fact again, it tends to make me sad. So this trip wasn't as exciting as I hoped, unfortunately. one should get to a wild horse. I don't know if you should expect them to be friendly or not. But this horse clearly... Let me take what I learned from my training. Ears are not alert or bothered in any sense. So I don't need to worry about it. Normally if the ears were super pinned back and I think if the horse was super focused on me then it would be a problem. But... He seems calm and <laughs> just picking up that grass with his silly buck teeth. I do wonder what these horses think about humans around here. This must be a common occurrence for them. What the hell? Do you see this? Do you see the thing on the top of his back? so much. 